This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Welcome to worship with Anaheim United Methodist Church. It is so good to be in worship with you during this fourth Sunday of the Easter season. I'd like to invite you to celebrate Holy Communion with us today. This is the first Sunday of the month, and this is our tradition to celebrate communion. So go ahead and get a hold of some bread and uh, some grape juice or red wine. And later in the service, we will consecrate those elements and celebrate the Lord's Supper together. I'd also like to remind you that our new book study, John, the Gospel of Light and Life, uh, continues this coming Tuesday at 6.30 p.m. under the leadership of Pastor M.J. Buist. Please feel free to contact Pastor M.J. or myself about joining that group. Please also note that we can still give to the coronavirus aid through the United Methodist Committee on Relief. So this is called the Sheltering in Love program through UMCOR, which of course is one of the most effective service agencies in the world. You're invited to give lovingly and generously to this cause with a check made out to AUMC, Anaheim United Methodist Church, with the memo, UMCOR Coronavirus. Please now join me in the blessing of the troop boxes. We have gift boxes that are prepared now to send overseas. They have been prepared once again. And will you join me in a blessing over these boxes before we ship them to those who are serving our country overseas today? Please pray with me. Gracious God, we ask your blessing on these gifts that have been lovingly prepared by our church members. We ask that they would bring joy to those who receive them and that you would keep them safe and that your peace would one day reign throughout the earth. In the name of God, our Creator, the Christ, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. And now, let us lift our hearts, our souls, and our voices in praise to the risen Lord as we join in worship. Our first scripture reading this morning is Psalm 23, a psalm of David. The Lord is my shepherd, 
I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in the right paths for his namesake. Even though I walk through the darkest valley, I fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup overflows. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. And I shall dwell in the house of the Lord my whole life long. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. He makes me lie down in Our second scripture reading comes from Acts 2, 42 to 47. They devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching and fellowship, to the breaking of the bread and the prayers. Awe came upon everyone because many wonders and signs were being done by the apostles. All who believed were together and had all things in common. They would sell their possessions and goods and distribute the proceeds to all, as any had need. Day by day, as they spent much time together in the temple, they broke bread at home and ate their food with glad and generous hearts, praising God and having the good will of all the people. And day by day, the Lord added to their number those who were being saved. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please pray with me before I offer a message this morning. Holy Spirit, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts be pleasing in your sight, O God, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. This past week, I received a call from a person who used to be a pastor at this church, Reverend Bob Schuler, He wanted me to know that he had visited the home of Dennis Gray, one of our beloved church members who, as we know, is living with cancer and is now in hospice care. It was a pleasure to speak with Reverend Schuler. I've heard a lot about him. And he said, Pastor James, I wanted you to know out of respect that um, 
I went there, I wanted you to be aware that I had. I also wanted you to know what a special man Dennis Gray is, and that I've known him since the early 1970s when Dennis was a leader in our youth group, when he was the most special youth that I'd met. He was such a wonderful young man. After we finished talking, I reflected on how Reverend Schuler's relationship with Dennis Gray was so strong that he came back 50 years later to be with Dennis in this sacred moment as Dennis is in hospice care. This is how much that youth meant to Reverend Schuler from all of that, over all of that time. This is something beautiful about the Christian faith, the sense of community, the sense of family in Christ that we share. I've so often been wondrous of the connections we have that in my travels to Mexico or Costa Rica or South Korea or the northwest side of Chicago, we call each other brothers and sisters. We meet people for the first time who we know are Christians and we can call them family. This took place even in the very beginning of Christianity. People remembered how Jesus' first act was to call 12 friends to be with him. He didn't want to go it alone. He gathered community immediately before he set off on his ministry. He also simplified the commandments of Scripture that were so complex and so numerous, and he said, Love God with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength, and love your neighbor as yourself. It's not only about rules anymore, it's about relationships. He taught us that we are more alive when we are together. And this message clearly took root because after his death and resurrection and during this Easter season, we remember these scriptures, the scripture from Acts today that celebrated community. It says, all who believed were together and had all things in common. They would sell their possessions and their goods and distribute the proceeds to all as any had need. They were more concerned about one another's well-being than their own. And the scripture says, and the Lord added daily to the number, to the number of those who were being saved. It was a wonderful, spontaneous sense of community and family of faith that attracted people to that first church. This is something that we cultivate still today. It's such an essential part of our faith, the relationship that we have with one another and with God. We, of course, read in the 23rd Psalm that our relationship with God is truly that. It's a relationship. The scriptures tell us, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures and leads me beside still waters. You prepare a table before me, and in the presence of my en enemies, you anoint my head with oil. The scriptures also tell us that God leads us like a shepherd. He's, he, the psalmist says, your rod and your staff, they comfort me. This touch of the shepherd's rod and staff, they let the sheep know that they're not alone, that someone is there with us. This touch, these relationships, this contact is essential as we gather in Christian community and it makes us strong. At first, when I learned that we would not be able to worship together, I was devastated and I thought, will this be a terrible blow to our Christian community? But very soon I realized that in a real sense, our Christian family is as well prepared for this pandemic as anyone could be. We have already laid the groundwork with God's help, calling each other and emailing each other. We have these extended relationships, this extended family, which sustains us week after week when we gather in this place, in this sanctuary, in worship. So in many ways, we are as prepared as we could ever be for this social distancing because we are still connected as one family in Christ. We simply have to pick the phone back up or keep emailing each other. These 
relationships are already established. It's really unique to live this way in this society because as a whole, loneliness is a pandemic in and of itself. This past week on NPR, I was hearing on the radio about this being the case long before this COVID-19 phenomenon took place. People are experiencing loneliness in terrible numbers. There's terrible social isolation already. What, an, what a unique mission our church has to reach out to those who are lonely and depressed. As a matter of fact, our church leaders were speaking about this and meeting about this long before this virus ever was a part of the conversation. We were prayerfully considered what people and what seniors specifically are isolated in our neighborhood. Who especially longs for Christian family to reach out to them? Who is suffering the worst poverty of all, as Mother Teresa used to call it? The poverty of loneliness. Perhaps you and I are learning a great deal of what it's like to be at home alone. Perhaps we will be better able to relate to those who are isolated always. What a powerful calling we may be receiving that we can now go from this place as soon as we're allowed to, to visit people's homes and to offer them the love and grace of Christ Jesus, the risen Lord. Let us pray together about this calling, how God might shape our church through all of these experiences and embolden, embolden us to add to the number of the family of God, those who are being saved from loneliness. Let us go forth in the spirit of the risen Christ to carry out this call. May it be so. Amen. When peace like a river attendeth my way, when sorrows like sea pillows roll, trials should come. Let this blessed assurance control that Christ has regarded my helpless estate and has shed his own blood for my soul. my soul with my soul it is well it is well with my soul my sin oh the bliss of this glorious thought my sin not in part but the nailed to the cross and I bear it no more. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord, oh my soul. It is well, it is well with my soul, with my soul. It is well, well with my soul and
And Lord, haste the day when my face shall be sight. The clouds be rolled back as a scroll. The trump shall resound and the Lord shall descend even so. Let us now join in Holy Communion as one community, as one family. I invite you to take bread and cup at your home, and we will consecrate those elements as we celebrate the Lord's Supper today. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. You formed us in your image and breathed into us the breath of life. And when we turned away and our love failed, your love remained steadfast. And so with your people on earth and all the company of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, Heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy are you and blessed is your Son, Jesus Christ. By your great mercy, we have been born anew to a living hope through the resurrection of your Son from the dead and to an inheritance which is imperishable, undefiled, and unfading. On the night in which Jesus gave himself up for us, he took bread, gave thanks to you, O God, broke the bread and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body, given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And after the supper was over, he took the cup, gave thanks to you, O God, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Drink from this, all of you, for this is my blood of the new covenant, poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. And so, in remembrance of these your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, O God, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ's offering for us. As we proclaim the mystery of faith, Christ has died, Christ is risen, Christ will come again. Pour out your Holy Spirit on us gathered here and on these gifts of bread and wine. Make them be for us the body and blood of Christ, that we may be for the world the body of Christ, redeemed by his blood. Gracious God, as we ask your blessing on these elements, we ask your blessing on all of our neighbors, our whole human family, and especially on those who strive to take care of those who are sick for health care workers. We ask also your blessing on those who are unemployed, that you would Provide for all people, any who are hungry throughout the earth, any who suffer war. God, we pray that you would bring your health, your peace, and that your strength through this meal and through us, your family, you would change the world, filling it with your grace, your truth, and your mercy. And so through your Son, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit in your holy church, all honor and glory is yours, almighty God, now and forever. Amen. And now with the confidence of, children of the children of God, let us pray together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power 
and the glory forever. Amen. Because there is one loaf, we who are many are one body. This bread which we break is a sharing of the one body of Christ. And the cup over which we give thanks, truly it is a sharing in the cup of Christ. Let us take and eat the body of Christ given for you. Amen. The blood of Christ shed for you. Amen. Let us now join in a prayer of thanksgiving after communion. Loving God, we thank you that you have fed us in this sacrament, united us with Christ, and given us a foretaste of the heavenly banquet in your eternal kingdom. Send us out in the power of your Spirit to live and work to your praise and glory. In Jesus' name, amen. Now let us go from this time of worship, united by Christ as sisters and brothers. Go now to welcome all people into the family of God. Amen.